Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel, Girl Gone Crypto. Today I have Michael Calce, the CEO and founder of Decentraub. And so Michael, thank you so much for joining me and coming on the show today. Hi Leah, thanks for having me here, I appreciate it. So I'm really excited to dive into what you guys are building. Um, at the time of this recording, you know, we had a huge um, issue with Facebook and Instagram having a big attack yesterday. So I know this is going to come out, you know, a week from now. But I think that really what you guys are, are working on and building is so needed and important in this next kind of phase of the Internet that we are looking at. And so just to give us a, a high level overview of, um, you know, what Decentraweb is, just kind of walk us through you know what that is and then we'll dive into it from there yeah so essentially decentral web is a decentralized implementation of the dns based layer protocol on the ethereum blockchain um, the dns protocol as we know it on the traditional internet hasn't been revised in over 38 years uh, so it's kind of a dinosaur protocol and we're looking to innovate and disrupt the space um, so that's how the project decentral web came about and we really want to offer the ability to users to register TLDs with us and create them permissionlessly. We want it completely decentralized, uh, void of censorship. Um, we don't want to control what users are doing. As we firmly believe uh, that the internet should be free. Um, so that's really the philosophy and the mantra behind the project. So before we dive into the details a little bit more of exactly what um, Decentral Web is doing to kind of help address that, let's kind of back up for a second for people who are watching this that maybe aren't really familiar with what the current problems are with our current DNS system. So can you kind of walk us through what the problem is? I know you mentioned that it hasn't been updated in 38 years as kind of this dinosaur program, but you know, what are kind of the blatant issues? And then maybe we can dive into how what you guys are building is addressing that. Yeah, so one of the main components obviously is that it's an old protocol and it hasn't been updated. Uh, you couple that with what ICANN is doing, which ICANN basically holds all the keys to the kingdom. And if you want to register a TLD, you have to submit an application to ICANN. Um, that submission process costs 250,000 US and it's non refundable. And it's just an application. Uh, <laughs> If you even do get approved for whatever magical reason, it's <laughs> 200 to 250K a year, um, just so ICANN can man maintain that TLD. You know, so we really don't like the centralization component of it. Um, we really feel like we have a better solution. And also, if you look at what's going on today with outages or mm -hmm. the, the, the current internet is prone to being taken down in certain components, and we feel like the Ethereum blockchain offers more stability and reliability. So we think it's a it's a win win situation. So let's kind of walk through that centralization versus decentralization piece of things and why decentralization decentralization actually is more stable, like you were talking about. Is it mainly because with centralization, you've got this kind of single point of failure, where in decentralization, the kind of power processing power fuel is like spread between so many different computers? Or can you kind of walk us through that difference? Yeah, exactly. I mean, just just imagine it with nodes set up everywhere and the way we, we view the Ethereum network. Uh, there's a lot of fail safes and redundancies built in. Now, obviously, current DNS uh, structure has a couple of similar redundancies, but like if one major data center goes down, there's major outages throughout, and it can take some time uh, to relay and get back online. We feel like that's why, I mean, part of the reason why when we were looking at which chain to use um, to incorporate this project within, we chose Ethereum simply because we feel like with such a critical layer of the internet, it should be, you know, uh, on the most stable and reliable and secure chain that that's available to us right now. Like we take a look at what happened with, you know, Solana and mm. their downtime and stuff like that. that. That's really why we chose Ethereum. And is um, Ethereum like more secure in part because of the network effect, because of the massive amount of users, or um, like what was kind of the main um, things you guys were looking at there? Honestly, you know, we did an evaluation, and it basically just checked all the boxes for mm -hmm. what offers. And like, we want to use this project to sort of give people 
an idea of that we think you know these protocols should all be redesigned mm -hmm. uh, they're all pretty old and when we're talking about critical infrastructure the internet i think there's a lot of opportunity here and that's why i'm drawn to ethereum personally i think mm -hmm. it's uh it's the best chain out there and we want to utilize uh, all that security reliability there's just so many components i mean i'm a technologist and i work in the security space right <laughs> so i just love all the uh the utility that uh, ethereum blockchain offers so let's kind of walk through um, Decentrub a little bit more, like who's kind of the, the target audience, if you will, and then kind of walk us through what it's like to actually interact with and use Decentrub. Yeah. Um, so we're going to start out in the crypto market. We're going to push this out to the crypto users. Um, you know, October 10th, we're, we're, we're launching with the registration process or the pre-registration process. So our focus and our marketing efforts are going to be really be focused on the crypto community. How cool would it be to own your own TLD? You know, you could register dot girl gone crypto with us. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a really cool component. So we're going to, we're going to market to the crypto people first, but I think um, this project has a much bigger goal in mind. We really want to create that bridge to the traditional market. We've put together an incredible team. Uh, for example, we have the former CTO and CIO of GoDaddy on board. Mm -hmm. um, just an example that we have all the right players to actually push this out. Because when I was uh, on the outside looking in, I feel like I realized there was a lot of gray area in the crypto space and a lot of people in the traditional market feel the same. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to create a project that's not only cool for the crypto people and really offers a lot of benefits, but something we can, uh, you know, cross that bridge with and really bring some of the traditional folks in. Because down our roadmap, we have a very ambitious and, and uh, really hyper uh, roadmap to get Decentra Mail online mm. and Decentra Hosting to basically offer an all-in-one solution. So it's going to be like a decentralized GoDaddy, if you will. So let's kind of walk through like the kind of real life examples here. So um, someone that would be using Decentraweb, is it mainly to create their own dot, you know, domain or will you guys have certain domains, um, you know, kind of like we've seen with like dot crypto, dot ETH, dot NFT, things like that. Can you kind of walk us through those two differences? Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's some people in the space that are doing uh, an offering where they uh, they own 10 TLDs, let's say, mm -hmm. and they're selling what comes before the dot. So they're right. selling subdomains. Um, we want to sell the entire top level domain. Mm -hmm. That's our goal. Um, so I, that's really a critical difference because, you know, we mm -hmm. get asked from time to time, what's different? How are you different than this project or that right. project? <laughs> and I think that offering users the ability uh, to purchase a TLD that's going to be minted as an ERC 721. So it's going to mm -hmm. be fully tradable, sellable. It's an NFT. Um, and it also allows the users, they can create subdomains as well. When you own the TLD, you can sell, let's say you own dot baseball from us. <laughs> right. You can sell fantasy dot baseball, you know, to someone mm -hmm. who wants to start up a fantasy league or something. Right. So the, really there's a lot of opportunity here for people to buy in early we suspect it will be sort of a, a land grab, if you will, for some of the really cool TLDs. Um, but I think that's really one a big component that separates us mm -hmm. is that we're literally you can buy what's after the dot. And so in terms of um, actually being able to use that TLD, let's say that I want to buy dot baseball. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And so. Um, how is that different than if I went through the whole, you know, like you were talking about the $250,000 ICANN, you know, application process, um, would that domain work only in certain kind of like interfaces or can you kind of walk us through that difference as well? Yeah. Good question. Uh, we get asked this obviously. Um, so we're going to start out with a plugin that's mm -hmm. going to be like a Chrome extension that's going to point to resolvers so that it knows that it exists. And that's how we're gonna function off the bat. But through our team and our, and our efforts and as the project develops, we really wanna leverage our relationships. I myself have a lot of connections in Silicon Valley space. 
obviously we have you know from our GoDaddy employees. So our goal is to really push this and have this be built in natively to browsers. Mm. So we have you know you just it's in Google Chrome. You don't even need to you know put a, put an extension or anything, and it's just built in. That's obviously the goal. I think as we develop and get traction and we have our user base go up, we can definitely achieve that. But it's an ambitious project. It's there's a lot of work uh, involved here. So we're, we're excited about the prospect, but we're really putting in the work right now to make it happen. So another thing I just um, kind of wanted to touch on was the DWeb token. And so can you kind of walk us through that a little bit? Like what are kind of some of the tokenomics, like what role does it play in the Decentraweb ecosystem? Uh, just kind of walk us through the, the token a little bit. Yeah. Um, so obviously we're going to offer staking rewards. We have a lot of incentive programs set up, but initially the best thing about getting into the DWeb token is that the registration process. So we're offering a one year to five year registration process. Currently mm -hmm. five years is the max. And there's a 50% discount if you pay with DWeb tokens. Oh, so if, interesting, okay. Of mm -hmm. course you can pay with Ethereum, but you're paying double the price. Mm -hmm. So you're highly incentivized to buy into the token um, and, and purchase the domains that way because you will be saving 50% of your money, which I think a lot of people will like. <laughs> okay. um, and moving forward, you know, as we get to the later portions of the project, where we are setting up nodes, um, we're going to offer users the ability to set up nodes, and they will also be getting a kickback. So there's going to be like a reward and incentive program set up there to distribute uh, some of the DWeb tokens for participating in setting up a node. Mm. But uh, overall, there's there's a lot of staking and a lot of reward and incentive programs coming up. We're still thinking of more and more every day, but <laughs> this is what we have in our current iteration. So. Uh, we, th we feel like there's a lot of opportunity for people to get involved and invested. We really want this to be a community project mm -hmm. and have involvement and just help us push with this philosophy and ideas. So, yeah, we're, we're going to make sure that it's uh, it's worth it for people. So we've talked a lot about, you know, kind of like the high level, like vision of what's kind of coming for you guys. But in terms of like right now, what the team is building, what you guys are working on, what you guys are excited about maybe in the next month or so, what's kind of happening, you know, behind the scenes with Decentraweb? Yeah, um, we're excited because we basically already have the pre-registration process set up. We're able to mint the NFTs already. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy about that because I look at a lot of projects and, you know, it's a lot of ideas and then, you know, fund my idea and we'll make it happen. And <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but we really want it to be technology driven mm -hmm. and have, you know, some semblance of a working product so that people can touch it, feel it and buy in. Um, and plus, what's great about this is that when you, you mint it as an ERC-721, you can go on some, let's say like OpenSea or something and kind of start trading and selling uh, the domain. So mm. I, I think uh, there's there's a lot of opportunity there and we've really been focusing on getting that ready for launch, um, which by the time this video is posted will have been a few <laughs> days ago. <laughs> Perfect. Um, is that, that actually opens up another question I kind of had just in general about, um, so you'd mentioned like one to five year registrations. So then, if people want to renew theirs, can they just renew it um, in terms of secondary markets? I know you kind of touched on that. Can you just kind of walk us through that whole, you know, piece of things? Yeah. Um, so it's one to five years and we will obviously anybody can renew uh, at any given time. And we will send out reminders if your <laughs> domain is about to expire. Right. Um, so that's cool. And also, let's say you buy a subdomain and that person doesn't want to renew the the tld anymore and you're stuck with the subdomain mm -hmm. we will send out a message to everyone who holds a subdomain and basically tell them it's look it's a first come first serve basis mm -hmm. uh, we're notifying you that the tld is not being registered so you, mm -hmm. you, you know it's anyone who has a subdomain will be notified first let's say so they have a little bit of an advantage there to mm -hmm. pick up the tld Right. 
Oh, that makes sense. Um, and yeah, I know, at least for myself, I was <laughs> worried I'm going to like miss the email and like, you know, lose my domain. <laughs> so that's all. Th that's good. <laughs> so um, anyway, well, Michael, this has been so much fun to have you on the show and get to, to really dive into what you guys are building at DecentraWeb and really even just get to pick your brain on kind of this transition from Web 2 to Web 3 and, and why it's needed and what the current issues are with the DNS system that we currently have in place. So really appreciate you sharing your thoughts and, and coming on the show. Um, so if someone is watching this and they want to check out Decentral Web and connect with you guys, um, where is the next best place for them to go? You can go to decentralweb.org, check out the website, make sure you register your own TLD before it's gone. Uh, you can also check us out at Twitter, uh, uh, Decentra underscore web uh, for all updates. Or we also have a Telegram as well that you can find. Perfect. Well, I will link to all of that below. So if anyone's watching this, you can Thank just you. click through in the description box to go check it out. So. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Leah. Great questions. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much again for coming on the show. It's been great to have you. <laughs>